Peace, love, and power. Welcome to another episode of the 828 Podcast. This is episode 66 of the 828 Podcast. I'm recording this on a beautiful Monday, August 14th, 2023 at 2.35 p.m. Eastern Standard. It's your host, Pretty Boss. Shouts out to everybody who has been checked in. Shouts out to everybody who's able to catch a few episodes on the YouTube channel. If you would like to catch the full 828 podcast, remember all episodes and more are available on patreon.com slash TV. Don't mind the date or the timestamp of this prophetic message. Whenever you catch this, whenever you find this, whenever this finds you, that's when it's time for this prophetic message to be activated over your life. What I'm picking up for this prophetic message is starting over. It's like you're you're starting from scratch. You're building from the ground up. Some of you may feel like there are certain things that you've had to let go of or walk away from or could have you could have felt like it was pulled away from you or taken away from you in this recent chapter of your life. But everything that was wiped away were things that was built on the sand. Everything that was wiped away was things that was built like a house of cards. Just one false thing, it was going to come crashing down anyway. Some of you are thinking about relationships, for instance. Some of you, certain relationships fell apart, whether it was your doing or whether it was the person that the other person's doing. And some of you have been going back and forth in your mind about this. Like, well, maybe if I would have did this or maybe this and or maybe that. And I'm here to remind you, this is coming out strong prophetically. You, you, you can't do that. That's... That doesn't even come from a a place of anything that is is really of substance, okay? Anything, any person that falls away from your life, any business, any home, any whatever you fill in the blank that falls away, this means that the foundation itself was not solid enough. So it doesn't matter what the details of the situation was that made it come crashing down. Whether it was you or the other person, you can go back and forth in your mind about this all day, and this isn't going to change the fact that it just didn't have a solid foundation. If the structure was solid enough, no matter what happened, it wouldn't have been moved. Again, this is why I've been talking a lot, especially as of lately, about the scripture that says, those who build their house on the rock are like those that when the wind comes... When the storm comes, when the rain falls, that house is not moved. But those who build their house on the sand, when the wind blows and the storm comes and the rain falls, great is the fall of that house. Anything that was has fallen away in your life, even if it's been a series of things that's fallen away over your life over the past months or over the past years or even for some of you the past decade, or decades, I'm hearing for some of y'all. This is because it just wasn't built on rock. It was built on sand. It wasn't a concrete foundation. Now you're being given a chance to start over. And the thing is, you can't let your past cripple you moving forward. Your past was to teach you. Your past was a learning experience. Your past was giving you the tools that you need so that you can rebuild whatever it is that you want to build on a solid ground in the future, which the future is what we're talking about right now. You're now living in your future. Everything that you went through was preparing you for a time such as this. This is another thing that I want to say. Many of you, you could be feeling like you're starting over in different aspects of your life. Some of you, it could be multiple aspects of your life. And this is the thing that I want to also remind you of. You're not starting over, okay? That, that's a, that, you, can't, you can never really truly even do that. Because even if, let's say, you had a business and your business came crashing down, 
and you're like, man, I, t- I spent 10, 15 years building that business and now it's nothing. Now I have to start over. You're not starting over because everything that you did for the past 10, 15 years in that business is now knowledge, is now wisdom, is now experience that you currently possess that can't be taken away from you. Maybe the business failed, but not the knowledge and the wisdom experience that you now have that is irreplaceable that you didn't have when you first started that business 10, 15 years ago. You could be like, man, I was in this relationship for 5, 10, 15 years. Now the whole marriage, the whole relationship came falling apart. Now I got to start over. You're not starting over because, again, you now have the wisdom, knowledge, and experience that you didn't have when you got married or when you got in that relationship 5, 10, 15 years ago. You're not starting over. You're starting from a more solid ground. You're starting from a more prepared foundation. You now, because of what you have already experienced that might have fallen apart, you now know exactly what it takes to rebuild that in a way that it can never fall down again. The thing is here for whoever this is for is to not be in your mind about why or if you should have did something different or if you could have. That's an illusion. That's a fallacy. That's a lying program that is um, trying to take hold of your mind, that is trying to take your focus off of the nature of what's actually happening here. Remember, as Romans 8.28 says, hence the 8.28 podcast, all things work together for good for those who are called according to the purpose of God and for those who love God. 2.42 p.m. as I just looked at the clock. Something about twos and fours, 2.42, 2.22, Even that in itself talks about foundations. This is the thing. This is, this is the, the, the gift and the blessing for those of you who this is for. Whatever you built before, whatever you're listening to and you're thinking like, yeah, man, pretty boss, I lost this. This all came falling apart. I invested so much time into this or to that. And now, pretty boss, I'm having to start over. Whatever it is that your thing is that you're thinking about that you have to build from scratch, what you don't realize is the blessing here is that you can build it so much faster than it was built the first time. Let's say there was a business or let's say you got yourself to a certain amount of income or whatever aspect of your life that you're, that this is in regards to. You're going to be able to recreate whatever that was to a completely different level and a lot faster. It's almost like you you ever heard the saying when they say you learn you learn things faster the second time around. So any of you who've ever tried to learn anything that it takes time for you to continue to Um, study or if you don't if you don't use it you lose it I know some of you who are academics have heard that before if you don't use it you lose it all right I can tell you I was doing calculus in high school I was doing calculus one two and three in college and I could I couldn't really tell you much about calculus today except for most of the answers either ended up being infinity or negative infinity after about three to four pages of work (laughs) other than that I can't tell you much but I'm pretty sure that if I haven't been using it, right? So I lost it, but I'm pretty sure if I was to sit down in a calculus class or with a calculus book, it might take a little bit of time for me to, you know, get my brain cells warmed back up to calculus, but I promise you I'm going to learn it the second time around much faster than I did when I was in high school and much faster than it hit me when I was in college because I've already done that. Think about, for those of you who've ever learned other languages or tried to learn other languages, Maybe you've touched languages on and off. Many of you had to take at least Spanish or French right here in the United States when you're in school. Most schools, you have to do some some type of language. So maybe the first time you were taking that Spanish class, maybe the first time you were taking that French class, it was like, whoa, this is a whole bunch of newness. But then the second time around, it's like, okay, I I know how to say, hola, como estas, muy bien, gracias y usted. You, You like, okay, I got that, rojo, azul. You got the basics, right? So the second time around, it's like, okay, I'm learning this a lot faster because I can move on to this phase because the beginning things, I already got that that in the bag. And let's say you went to it three, four, five times in your life. The fifth time that you're going back to that thing, you're going to be at a completely different level and you're going to learn it way faster the second, third, fourth, fifth time around. This is what you need to look at your life experience in regards to. Don't look at your life experience as the things that you've lost as a loss. It's not a loss. It's your toolkit. 
It's those things that you have that are intangible that can't be taken away from you. Relationships can fall away. Homes can fall apart. Finances can fall. Businesses can fail. Everything can be taken away from us that is physical. But what they cannot take away from you is your knowledge. What they can't take away from you is your experience, your wisdom. These are the things that are invaluable. This is where you need to shift your focus. Don't focus on the material aspects. This is the illusion. The devil is a lie. Don't make me yell, family. I'm having to be gentle with my throat today. Okay? The devil is a lie. I know somebody who's saying, the devil's not a lie, pretty boss. The devil's a liar. No, I like to say he's an entire lie. Okay? I got English. Don't come for me on that. But as I'm saying, the the physical is the illusion. That's the distraction, family. That's the thing that bears no fruit. That's the thing that keeps us in that double-mindedness. What does scripture tell us? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What does it also say? Those who keep their minds and their eyes focused on the most high, focused on things above, focused upward, focused on that higher perspective shall be what? Kept in perfect peace. If there's anything good, if there's anything admirable, if there's anything excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, focus on these things. If you look at your life and you look at the physical things that fell out of your life or the physical things that you no longer have, that doesn't, that's not going to make you feel good. It's not going to make you feel good at all. If anything, it's probably going to make you start seeing even more and more losses or start accruing even, even more and more losses just because that's where you're focused at. But if you look at your life, and you're like, you know what, well, bump them material things because these material things are all illusions anyway. Ain't nobody taking nothing that they've acquired physically in this life nowhere with them. I'm going to tell you how a, a, a luciary, if I'm saying that word right, this life is, okay? Think about when you dream. You ever have a dream where you're in a dream and it's like you have everything you want? I remember when I was a kid, I used to have dreams about like... Being in a toy store and being able to get every Barbie that I want. Shouts out to Doll World Shows. If you know, you know. I remember I used to just have these dreams every now and then. It's like I could just get any doll, any toy I want. I would be feeling like I was in heaven in these dreams. That was my heaven. It probably still is my heaven on the low. Who knows? But that was my heaven. And then I remember when I would wake up from the dream and I would be so mad. Like, sometimes I would think about it that whole week. Like, oh, my God, if I would have just hurried up and opened the toys. Like, if I could have just took those toys from my dream room to here. Oh, my God. Why was it a dream? I want you to think about how fictitious in that aspect that reality is. This is the same thing that we're experiencing here, family. The only difference between the life that we're living in our dream world is that this is just a, a longer dream. This is a more consistent dream. It's trapped in time, space, reality, which is why we're able to say, oh, today's August 14th. Oh, it's 2.48 p.m. Look at those numbers. Oh, oh it's 2.48 p.m. We're able to say these things, and that slowness that we experience here in the third dimension is what makes this seem more real than it actually is. But in, in all actuality, this life is a dream just as any dream that we have when we go to sleep. Let's keep it above. So when we're focusing on these physical things, when we're focusing on anything that's going on in the 3D, for one, this is when we slow ourselves down. This is when we add resistance. This is when we slow down our own timelines because now we're off course. We're not even of this 3D, especially for my chosen ones that I'm speaking about. This ain't even your realm. You come up from a place of much faster moving energy. You come from a place of light. Think about when we think about how light travels. People, one of the fastest speeds is when you say it travels at the speed of light. That's, that's a speed that we can't even wrap around or fathom with our mind. So you got to understand that you are purely a light being, but you're having this physical experience. And I'm speaking to my chosen ones here in this reality right now. So you come from a very, very fast paced, very high vibrational realm. And you're now trapped into this third dimensional reality. And a lot of times we feel constricted. We feel sluggish. We feel like things are not moving or we're moving slow when we're focused often on these physical things. Take your mind out of the physical things. Oh, I lost this, or I lost this person, or I lost this job. Take your mind out of that and focus on what do you have? What did, what did you gain from that experience? What do you now know about business that you didn't know? What do you now know about finances that you didn't know? From relationships, what do you now know about yourself that you didn't know? What have you healed? What's different about you? 
What do you now know about people? What do you now know about the nature of relationships? These are where we get the fruit and we're able to build something much faster from a solid foundation that no matter how the wind falls or blows or the rain comes or the storm comes, nothing will move it. This is the gift. I'm telling you, this, the, whoever this is for, this is for you to understand whatever fell apart in your life. It, it, it was supposed to. It, did, it didn't have the necessary. The foundation wasn't right. Whether it fell apart a year ago, a day ago, 10 years ago, it doesn't matter when it happened. It was bound to happen. So better sooner than later. Because since it's already occurred, for those of you who are listening to this, you, you could still be stuck in a situation that was meant to crumble away. That's even worse. That's like when I tell people, people are being relationships that they know are toxic, that they know is just heading in the wrong direction. And a lot of people, you know what 90% of people do, they stay in those relationships because it's comfortable, because they feel like, well, if I leave this relationship, when's going to be my next relationship? People are afraid to step away from what they've been knowing or they're, able, they're afraid to step away from that comfort zone, even when it's something that's detrimental to them. But I always tell people, you can either cut this relationship off now or you continue to build time, experiences, and memories with this person and even different binds because the longer you stay with a person, then now you might start intertwining responsibilities. Now the longer you stay, maybe you had, you already had a kid, now you have more kids. Maybe you didn't have a kid, now you have kids. That's, that's a tie. That's, that's a tie. That's a bond for life for most people, right? Or maybe you didn't have properties with the person. Now you got properties with this person. Now you have investments with this person. Now, even like I said, even it's just on a light end of memories. Now you have a lot of memories. You have a lot of history with this person. So the longer you stay in the situation, the longer it takes for you to heal from it. You might as well uh, kill it, dead it today. Why continue to delay yourself? Why make it harder? The longer you stay in something, it's going to just bring more difficulties in the future. So even for those of you who you lost something, trust me, it's a blessing that you already lost it because you could still be sitting in a situation that was destined to break down. Destined. It just wasn't built on a solid rock. There's no way around that. So the key here is to understand that, one, not only was it built on a non-solid foundation, but this isn't to judge yourself and be like, man, I should have known. You didn't. You can't know what you don't know. Pat yourself on the back for being able to acquire the experience in the first place. Pat yourself on the back for building whatever it is that you already built. If it fell apart, if we're looking at this from a higher perspective, this is because it served its purpose in your growth. It served its purpose in your knowledge and in your experience. It already did what it needed to do. It no longer serves you. Even when we think about relationships, there are certain relationships that we come in. We all have heard this. Some people are meant to be in your life for a season. Some people are meant to be in your life for a lifetime. Those seasonal relationships that fall apart, no matter how good or how bad, quote unquote, that they were, when they finish and they're done and we've learned everything that we need to learn, the contract is finito. It's expired. It is what it is. It's at a point that if you stay there, you are going to be stuck. You're going to be stagnant and sometimes even feel like you're moving backwards in life. When you release things that you've learned and it's already served its purpose, now you're able to go ahead and continue to grow, continue to evolve, and get new experiences that's going to take you to higher heights, which is what we come into this life to do, especially as chosen ones. I can't speak for worldly people, family. I don't know what the world does. I'm talking to my chosen ones here. Just a reminder in case you forgot, okay? <laughs> If there's some worldly listening to this and you're like, oh, not me, pretty boss. I just want to sit around and eat Cheetos and watch Love and Hip Hop. This ain't for you, buddy. It ain't. You feel what I'm trying to say? I'm talking to the chosen ones. We came here with a purpose. This is not our realm, but we'll make the best of it. So check this. For those of you who this is for, I don't care if you feel like you are starting from scratch. If you're at ground zero, you're at ground one. I want you to understand the benefit that you have from this position. This is this is when it get this is when we we really start cooking. I want you to think about this because everything has a positive and a negative. It doesn't matter. When you're up, then the other side of that is like, okay, one false move and I can just fall from grace. But look about when you're down. Think about when you're already on the ground. Where where's the only place you can go? You can only go up from here. That's that 
I have nothing to lose but everything to gain energy. That's powerful. That sometimes and a lot of times that I have nothing to lose place in life is way more powerful than being in that high position because that's when people start compromising. That's when other people's opinions start mattering. That's when everything gets a little bit convoluted. That's when the fun gets sucked out of things because it's like there's so much responsibility here. There's so many moving parts, just one false move, and everything can just come crashing down, especially if it wasn't actually built on a solid foundation. This is not this that's not our problem. It's many people that that is their problem. You looking at yourself and judging yourself like, oh, my God, I lost everything. And you have no idea there's about to be some heavy falls. People about to fall from some real high places. You fell, but the Most High protected you and didn't let you get all the way to the top so that you could take that deadly fall. The Most High might have took you two floors up. The the, the, the fall hurt, but not that bad. But when you fall from the 100 fall, flow. Or even when if we're talking about Martin, the fifth flow, not the fifth floor, the fifth flow. OK, that's going to hurt a lot more than if you fall from the second floor. So get ready. It's going to be people following no parachute. I digress. This is not about that. What I'm trying to say is you're in a powerful position right now. What do you want to create? Because a lot of you, there's going to be something that you just get passionate about. Uh, some of you are already doing it now. Some of you have been creating something and you don't see the parallel. You're like, why am I doing this? I'm not making money from this. I don't have any immediate ideas of, oh, I can create a product from this. Some of you are literally creating something. And if you're listening to this and, and this resonates with you, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to use art as an example. It could be a piece of art. It could be certain things that you do just as a hobby. Even, for instance, let's say it's music, sounds. It could be many different things. It could be certain stuff that you just write every day that you're like, well, this is good. Like, I write this, but I'm not about to, you know, it's not a book or anything like that. It's something that you've been doing every day, whoever this is for. And you don't see the parallel. You don't see how this is going to manifest into something that is going to give you abundance or material abundance. And when I tell you this is a seed, like you've already been working on something, see, this is why we have to go with the flow because sometimes you don't realize we can't always see the full picture and family wouldn't life be bored anyway if we could see everything like imagine if before you went to sleep tomorrow you knew exactly how your day-to-day was gonna go and some people live like that and they're like some of the most miserable bored people right but think about if you just already knew everything that was gonna happen to your life this week this month next year and to the day like think about if you just knew everything wouldn't that kind of take the fun out of it? Wouldn't that take the anticipation? It'll be like watching a movie and you already know what's going to happen. Like, th- th- that's that's not the same level of enjoyment. Now, there's few classics that, I'm going to be honest, I can watch from beginning to end. But it's not because of the suspense factor. It might be because of the comedy factor, because the level of depth of the movie. But let's just say your average movie. Who would go watch a movie that you already know the entire story of how it's going to go? Because you've seen it before. That's not fun. It's always the, 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 the best time and the best satisfaction from movies comes from when you're in there and you're anticipating. Oh, my God, what's going to happen next? What are they going to do? How is this going to end? It brings an excitement factor. This is how we got to look at our lives. Because, first of all, our lives is a movie. Believe it or not. We get so trapped in this 3D dense reality with all of these fictitious people on the media, social media. Just all these people just making a whole bunch of noise. Keeping us trapped at a low vibration, keeping us really stuck in this matrix, like really thinking that these things that we see is like what it is, not realizing that we're so much more dynamic than these things. We are a step above everything that we're entrapped and enclosed by. So think about that. You have the ability and what many of you are doing, like I was saying, is you're creating something. And you don't even see where this is leading. It's going to unfold like a like a, a really cool movie. I was 24 and, and 22 seconds in as I just glanced at the clock. I'm telling you, something about 24, 22, 222, 242, all that. Um, it, it, you're creating something here. And it's meant to unfold the way that it is. This is what's bringing that adventure to, to, your, to your life. This is, this is your movie that you're living in. This is your movie. Wouldn't your movie be a little bit boring if you already knew what was going to happen from beginning to end? I mean, think about it. I know that's what we think that we want. 
we live in a world of narcissistic energy. A lot of us were raised by, and even if it, if it wasn't your own parents that was narcissist, you know, we grew up the media, society, you know, the fictitious society, and composed of people that come across as very narcissistic. And in those societies, there's this idea of control, control, control. Think about our governments. Think about the institutions in place. Everything is about control. People want to control the narrative. People want to control your opinion. People want to control your ideas, your thoughts, your beliefs. Control, 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 control. But when you really think about it, we step outside of that rigid paradigm. What if you can just be free-flowing? What if it's just adventurous? Isn't that much more fun? Think about if you go out of town. I'm the type of person I go out of town there might be some things like maybe let's say I'm going to a state or to a country I've never been to or a city. I'm going to, of course, look at some things that oh, I'm like, oh, we can do all of these things. We can do this. We can do that. We can do that. But when I get there, I'm going with the flow. I'm not going to have a, a itinerary from A to Z at 930. Some people are like that. Shouts out to y'all. But I'm not that type of person. I'm like, OK, these are all the options. We're going to go with the flow. We're going to see how the wind blows. And I always have the best of experiences. I don't need an itinerary at 9.30, we're going to do this. At 12.45, we're going to do that. You ever been to a um an event where, like, you're with a group of people and y'all do have kind of, like, an itinerary like that? You don't even get to do everything that you want to do. I remember I went to New York um on a study abroad trip when I was in college for photography, right? And I was already a photography. Um, I already had my business, but I just took it up as, like, an, an elective just for fun. So I could have went anywhere in the world. I was like, no, I'm going to New York. You know, <laughs> New York is a country in itself anyways. But so I went there and all we did was visit these different museums and these different places. And all of the places was cool. But if I was on my own time, there was a there was like one museum. I probably would have just only went to that museum the entire time. It was two museums that I loved. It was the MoMA and it was the um the Museum of National History or something like that. When I tell you those two museums could have taken up all my time, everything else I could have I could have done without. Statue of Liberty was cool too, but I could have did that like, you know, just on an early morning and been done with that. That that was cool though. We did a lot of stuff that was really fun. That's not what I'm trying to say. We did we did a lot. We went to a lot of the boroughs, all that. But my thing, I would have been in that a uh, museum of of, nat- of natural history like for a hot minute i didn't get to go through that whole museum because we was on a schedule but if i was on my own time i would have done that i would have had just a whole day where i was just doing that and probably went back a second or third day because it's a really big museum it's very it was very dope i it was so many exhibits till today i'm like man i still didn't get to see that exhibit <laughs> i'm still thinking about it but i i said that to say your life is a movie. This is the movie that you're living in. Enjoy it. Don't think that you need to know what's happening. That takes the fun out. That's that's not meant for us. You're meant to live a life that is satisfactory, abundant, adventurous. How many of you listening like adventure? You can experience this adventure in your own life. You don't have to go out of town. You don't have to go on a trip to discover adventure. You don't have to to date a wild boy or a wild girl to feel adventure. Bring that adventure into your own life. Enjoy that adventure of your life not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Knowing, but this is the thing. What I mean by not knowing what's going to happen is the specifics. But if your focus is right, if you're focusing on things that are good, that are honorable, that are worthy of praise, maybe you don't know the specifics of what's going to happen tomorrow, but you know what you've been focusing on. And you know, since your focus has been good, whatever tomorrow brings, even though you might not know the specifics, you know it's going to be something good. You know it's going to be something to wait up excited for and see, ooh, let me see what I've been creating for myself. Let me see how the day unfolds to reflect to me what I've been mentally, spiritually, and emotionally doing. Some of you are going through a process right now, and what the process I'm going to explain, you could be anywhere. I'm going to, it's three phases to this process. So this could be something that you're doing and you're at step one, or you could be at step two or you could be at step three. It doesn't matter where you're at. Go with the flow. All of these stages are enjoyable. So depending on your perspective. So some of you are at a stage where it's like, it's time to kind of like pull back and take it easy. Rest, nourish yourself, stay peaceful, meditate, pray, be quiet, right? 
some of you have already done this. Some of you have already been in a place of solitude, and some of you have done this for quite some time. Some of you have already took a step back. Some of you, there's something that you might do on a regular basis, or maybe there's certain people that you communicate with on a regular basis. But as of lately, you like, nah, you pull back from a lot of people, places, and things. Others of you, this is what you're being called to do if you haven't already been doing this. Take a step back. Calm down. Stop trying to force things. Stop trying to find the next thing. A lot of times when people find their life falling apart, the, 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 they, then they go into panic mode. It's like, oh, my God, I got to do this. I got to the house is falling and they trying to pick up the bricks and, and build a house back up while the house is falling. You just got to let the house fall. I'm, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it quite honest. You just got to let the cards fall how they may. You ain't going to be able to fix that house of cards when it's in the middle of falling. You just got to let the cards fall. And after the cards hit the floor, now you can rebuild. And you'll be able to build from a place of clarity, from a place of peace, from a place of all that noise from the cards falling from the house, falling from the relationship, falling. After the dust settles, now you'll be able to see clearly. Right? So some of you, this is what you need to do. Some of you have already done this. The next part of this phase is some of you are going to start to feel a slight passion or slight interest in regards to certain aspects of your life. So it might be like, let's say you did this one thing for a living and maybe you still enjoy to do that, but there's something else that has your attention. It's just something else that you feel a lot more passionate about and you've been making time for it. Maybe it doesn't pay the bills. Maybe you don't have any idea in your head how you're going to monetize this thing, but you just love to do it. It just brings you satisfaction. This is good because you know what this is leading to? This is leading you to the point, which is phase three, where you're going to be inspired to take radical action all of a sudden. Right now, what a lot of you don't understand, a lot of you that might be listening to this could be in phase two, where it's like, you know, you're going with the flow. Maybe there are certain things that you started to find an interest in or you started to get passionate in regards to something in your life. And when I say passionate family, it don't have to be off the walls passionate. Like, like you're just like waking up geeked every day. Like, oh, my God, I can't I can't wait to wake up because I got to do this thing or I, I hate going to sleep. It doesn't have to be like level 10 passion. It could be just something that you just have a slight interest in, like you're interested in it. You're curious about it. You focus on it on a regular basis. What you're doing is you're building momentum. And the momentum that you're building is going to lead you to radical action. You're going to create something and it's all going to come together at once where you create something. It's going to have so much momentum already in store that by the time you put this thing out, it's going to do numbers. I'm telling you, it's going to do numbers. Right now, it's like you're in a stage, if you're in phase two, you feel like you're, you're in a waiting game. Like you're in this place where they, where they tell you, oh, you got to be patient. Be patient. It's happening. This is what I'm going to refer to right now is the waiting game. You're waiting. You're allowing this momentum to build. You're waiting for the next step. You're waiting for, okay, what is the inspired action that I need to take? When is it time for me to come out? When is it time for me to step out? When is it time for me to show my face again? When is it time for me to pop out? You see what I'm saying? Y'all know how we like to pop out. <laughs> You're waiting on this. And, and, and that's a, that's, that's, you're, you're right where you need to be. The thing is, whatever you're doing, whatever you've been focusing on, make sure that you continue to have gratitude. Just continue to trust. Understand that all of your needs are being taken care of during this time. Even if it's like, you know what, I would love a little bit more support. I would love to have people around me that I knew I could depend on. And you feel like I don't have many people I can depend on. Understand that the lamb is going to be provided when you need it. Even when I talk about, when we talk about Abraham and his first son, he was going to sacrifice his first son, the son that him and Sarah had just been waiting forever in a decade for. And then the most, I was like, look, I need you to sacrifice him on the altar. And Abraham was like, all right, bet. I don't want to do it, but I'll do it. And right when he was about to sacrifice his first son, his, his son, um, his son, okay, that's when the lamb was provided. This is how you need to, to think about your life. Any anybody that you need to have in your life is going to appear. Even if you feel like, man, pretty boss, I'm alone. I ain't got nobody, man. Anybody that you need and when you need a person, they're going to appear like that lamb. Don't forget that. This is what abundance is. Abundance. A lot of people mistake abundance for just see, they only see it in one way. They see it like, man, abundance is if I need money and I got billions of dollars, that's an abundance of money. 
they see abundance as, oh, if I, if I want to do something, I want to have people in my life, I got 100 people I can call. No, what abundance is is that you have an infinite supply, and no matter what things look like, anything that you need is always going to show up and it's going to appear, especially when you're chosen. Our abundance is different. Now, I'm not saying that our abundance is not going to also reflect itself materially at a certain point. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is regardless of what your material circumstances look like, you're always abundant because that lamb is going to be provided for you when you need it. Even when you could think about this in terms of finances, let's say you're like, man, I, I really could do with a little bit more leverage, pretty boss. I could do with a little bit more leg room. I really could. What you're going to see is those finances are there when you need it. Those finances appear when you need it. Maybe you're like, man, I wish it was already sitting in my bank account, but you don't have to focus on that because see, you're abundant. We, we, we don't lack in, in the most high. We don't lack in God. So whatever you need is going to, to show itself there when you need it, it makes me think of um, when El- I want to say it was Elijah. It was a woman that he was in this town. And he was like, look, feed me. I'm a prophet of God. And she was like, OK, I'll feed you because I do see that you're a man of God. But the food I'm going to feed you, like me and my kid, we already starving on the low. And we're rationing what we do have, but it's not even enough. Like we're going to die anyway. But it's OK. Like even though we're going to die and it's, it's not enough food for me and my child, I'm going to feed you. So she fed the prophet. She fed, fed Elijah. And Elijah was like, okay, what do you have? She was like, well, I had these oils. He was like, all right, bottle those oils up and sell those oils. So what happened as she was taking those oils and selling those oils, she never ran out of oil. It's like it kept reproducing itself. She kept, the, she, the, the, she kept coming across enough oil and always had a continual store of oil that she could sell. She became very abundant. To make a long story short, her and her child probably eating today real good even if it's in the heavenly realms y'all understand what i'm trying to say so this is the nature of abundance there are certain things that you think are finite there are certain resources that you have that you're like man if i use this up i'm gonna use this up not realizing that those resources are going to be able to fuel and and multiply even if let's talk about finances y'all got me really going today who is this for let me know in the comments even if we're talking about finances let's say you're like man all i got is this 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 amount of money but i need to hold on to this money i need to ration this money because i don't know when i'm gonna get this ration get this money again that's a scarcity way of thinking that's not really the most abundant mindset right and i'm saying this because sometimes you are led to save but i digress i'm really more into let's think about investing instead of saving because money's always depreciating in value. So we're saving money today is not going to be, uh, it's going to lose its value tomorrow. So let's say you have a certain amount of money. You're thinking about it in terms of, I got to hold this. I got to, I got to squeeze this. I got to keep this. I got to ration this for the next 10 months. When, if you look at it from a different perspective and you realize that you have everything that you need to do the things that you need to do, you might start looking at that money that you have and you might start seeing it instead of it looking like $100, instead of it looking like 1000 instead of it looking like 10000 instead of it looking like 100000 you looking at it and you easily seeing how that could turn into another zero behind that money if you use that money in a certain type of way, if you invest that money into a certain situation, if you invest that money into a certain idea that you have. You like, you know what? I could say this thousand dollars or I could take this thousand dollars and invest this in an idea that I have. This is exactly the amount of money I need to get my business started. This is the exact amount of money I need to get my project off the ground. This is the exact amount of money I need to invest in that stock that I wanted to invest in. Just throwing things out there and you could flip that thousand into ten thousand. That ten thousand into fifty thousand to a hundred thousand. That hundred thousand into two hundred and fifty thousand. That two fifty into five hundred thousand. That five hundred thousand into a million. That million into two. That two into four. I know y'all catch my drift. This is how you multiply money. This is how you build wealth. You're never gonna become rich. You're never gonna be get to certain levels of financial success from saving. That's what poor people do. Why y'all got pretty balls coming out today, family? I'm not supposed to be on the finances right now, but we talking. This is whoever it's for. Chosen ones must be fruitful in all ways. We came here to live life and live it abundantly. Okay? Not just spiritually in all realms. So 
This is what you do when you look at people that have certain degrees of wealth and certain degrees of abundance that are flowing into their life. That's because they're moving their money. It's just like water. Think about if you have water and, you, and no matter how pure the water is, let's say, just say you keep it in a bowl. That water going to end up getting stale. That water going to end up getting debris, collecting bacteria, all types of amoebas going to start multiplying. But if you take that water and you keep it running just like a waterfall, it continues to replenish itself. It continues to stay fresh. This is how we have to think of our money, about money. Money's a tool. So we got to move it. We got to let it work for us. It's not about holding on to it. It's about using it to build whatever it is that we're trying to build, whether it's wealth, whatever, whether it's uh, uh, stability, whatever you're trying to build with it. It's a tool. OK, I don't know who that was for. Y'all that made me go into full fledged pretty boss finance major mode. OK, check it, though. Back back to back to prophecy. No. <laughs> Let's get out of business one on one. Let's get back into prophecy. All right. Whatever you're dealing with right now is a temporary situation. If you find yourself in a financial situation that you're underwhelmed about, if you're living in a living circumstance that you're underwhelmed about, if you're working a job or career that you're underwhelmed about, this is temporary. This is about to change. And this is the thing. Be grateful for it. Even if it's not what you want, we still got to be grateful. We still got to make the best of what we have in all times. This is where the magic happens. When you're grateful for what you have, when you make the best out of your circumstance, this is when you become invincible. It's easy for people to feel good in favorable conditions. Take away those favorable conditions, favorable conditions from them same people that'll crack. They'll be out here looking naked and afraid, low self-esteem, hiding, recluse. A lot of these people, even a lot of these celebrities, take away the the things that they're able to physically show you that it looks like they have. Take take those things away from them. Take away their clout. Take away their this. Take away their jewelry. Take away their cars and clothes and their money. And see how many of them are still able to pop out. Most of them won't. Most of them will, be, will run away fast and hope that you forgot their name because they're so embarrassed. They wouldn't even want to come out. It'll probably be a few, 1% of them that is like, look, I don't care about none of that. I'm still popping out. You think I care about that? I've been me. I am not those things that I have. I am, I'm the money. It's futile to be able to say that. That's a that's a completely different type of person. So you need to be that person in your life. Understand that you are the money, you're the wealth, you're the blessing. These physical things is is irrelevant to you. If you're here, you're in your right mind, you're in your right energy, you are the money, you are the blessing, you are the success, you are the abundance, you are the favor. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I know y'all understand what I'm saying for this, for for those of you who this is for. This is a temporary situation. This is something that is happening for you because some of you, you're in a situation where it's putting you under pressure. It's like it. some of you, certain things had to fall apart so that you could be forced outside of your comfort zone because some of you were in certain situations and you became stagnant. You was comfortable. You was too comfortable. And we didn't come here as chosen ones to be comfortable. We came here as chosen ones to show out. I ain't even going to lie. We came here as chosen ones to rapidly evolve in every sense of the word, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, all of that. We came here to be on an adventure. We're not going to be here long. I don't care if you live 100 years, 200 years. That's not a long time in, in the grand scheme of eternity. Let's keep it a buck. Stay positive. Like I said, if you've been anything that you've been dissatisfied about in your life, this is temporary. This is another thing. For some of you, and I've been talking about this for a long time, some of you have a true friendship coming into your life. Some of you already might have. And and for those of you who I'm speaking about, this is going to be somebody that's probably of the same sex. And if, if this is a relationship where it's opposite sex, this is going to be platonic. This isn't going to be something that's like, oh, this is a friend, but maybe it's a lover. Like, this is going to be a genuine platonic friendship. If you've never had a platonic friendship before, I highly recommend that you reevaluate your life. I know people that has never had a platonic friendship. And even when I talk about the friend that I was friends with for years, we always talk about our friendship and people always be like, so y'all never, y'all never been with each other. Y'all ne-? No. What are you a moron? Have you never been able to have a relationship with the opposite sex that is purely friendship? I, I wish that for everybody to have at least once. I know I've talked to several men that they don't even believe in the possibility of that. I'm like, that's crazy. Like, what type of world y'all live in? Like, where's the purity? (laughs) 
that is one of the best relationships you can have. That become that ends up becoming like a brother and sister. Like that that's some that's a that'd be deeper than relate sometimes some of these romantic relationships that are conditional. To have an unconditional relationship with the opposite sex, that's powerful. So, anyways, I digress. Let me not get into all of that. Some of y'all have a friendship that's coming into your life or already has a friendship that has been appearing in your life. And this is going to be somebody that is, like, of the same sex for many of you. Like I said, for some of you, this is going to be the opposite sex. But if it is, it's platonic. And that's all it's meant to be. It's not meant to be romance or any of that. This is something that is going to become very deep if it hasn't already. This is something that... It's almost going to be filling some type of gap in your life. Like this friendship is going to feel like the missing piece. This friendship is going to answer a lot of questions. This this friendship is going to tap you back into who you truly are. Because this person is like an, an actual reflection of you. This is like a yin and a yang type of situation. This is like a twin. And... From whatever foundation that you might feel like you're starting over from, the fact that you and this person are coming together, whatever you create from this point is going to be it's going to be created at, at rapid speed. You both are going to experience progress and success in your life in a way that you've never experienced before. This is going to take you to horizons that you've never even been. You're going to be traveling, exploring different realms with this person. Okay. It's like two powerful electric fuses coming together. You know, y'all ever seen the Fast and the Furious and you know how they love, I forgot what it's called. Um, but when they're in the car and they hit the, the switch and it makes the car go faster, this is what this connection is like. It's like y'all plug into each other and it's like y'all are stronger. It's like when the, the, the Bible says two is better than one and a threefold cord is not quickly broken where two or three are gathered in my name there i am in the midst it's like a mastermind group that the thinking grow rich talks about some of you this is coming in or already has come in don't take this friendship for granted this is very significant so many people be out here looking for where's my person where is this and where is that and man let me tell you a relationship can come in many different forms and a relationship might not come in the form that you thought you was looking for, but the the relationship that comes in could bring you satisfaction to a whole nother level that, that you you didn't even know was possible if you're open to it. So some of you have this coming in because, like I said, y'all are here to do light work. You're here to do your purpose. The Most High is not going to have you do this alone. And like I said, if you've been somebody who's alone and you don't have any friends or you feel like you don't have anybody in your life like that, trust me, this is coming for you. This is going to be the many, the beginning of many doors that are opening. The, this is going to be the beginning of you coming into contact with even other people who are actually part of your soul tribe. This friendship, this union that I'm speaking of, this is somebody that is cut from the same cloth as you. This is somebody that comes from the same place that you come from. This is somebody that's like, it's going to feel like y'all are twin souls. This is somebody that you can be yourself with, somebody that you can express yourself with. If you've always felt like somebody who suffers in silence or you don't have anybody to relate to or talk to, this is going to break that wall. This is going to make you feel seen. This is going to make you feel heard and vice versa. This is a time for you to continue to love yourself, continue to nurture yourself. Remember that you're already abundant. Everything that you need is going to multiply. That oil that you have that you think you only have a gallon of oil, as you sell those oils, you're going to see that it's like, man, I got all this oil. I started out with one gallon of oil and I done sold about 100 gallons so far. Wow, amazing. This is the type of energy that you're in. Don't focus on whatever things look like on the outside. Work with what you have. You have more than enough to do everything that is going to bring in big material prosperity for you. Big material harvest. Big spiritual prosperity as well. Remain positive. Continue to speak life over your life. Life and death is in the power of the tongues. Watch what you say over your life. Happiness is here for you. This new beginning is going to bring you happiness like you've never experienced before. This is a new cycle. Get excited. Your life, your last cycle, the la your past life in this life, that was hell. 
Who wants any of that good? Let, good thing all that stuff crumble down. Let it crumble again. That stuff wasn't going to produce nothing but toxicity in your life. You have all new everything. You have new people coming into your life. New creativity, new passions, new businesses, new ways of seeing yourself, new ways of being. This is complete transformation. Your life is going to really cook up. It's going to get very exciting. You're going to see that it gets a lot more adventurous. You're going to see that as you embrace life, as you go with the flow, as you focus on all of the things that you have to be grateful for, you're going to see that it's like you have so much to celebrate. It's going to be like you have one thing after another to do. You're going to go from a place of feeling like you had to pull back, step back. You're dealing with all this loss, this emotional loss, feeling the type of way from all the stuff that you lost from your past hellish life that was really hellish anyway when you think about it. You didn't take a loss. You let go of trash. You took the trash out. Who needs any of those things? You have victory coming in your life in ways that you never could have, could have seen if you held on to those old things of the past that you feel like you're hurt for letting go of right now. No, you're not. That's an illusion. That's 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 meaning you're not focused in, in, in the direction of where you're actually heading. You're looking back. You have the courage to break some of these toxic cycles. You have the courage to release people, places and things. You sacrifice these people who no longer served you. And because you made the sacrifice and this was the right sacrifice, you're getting ready to experience new beginnings and a new life like you can't even think of. As scripture says, the most high will do above and beyond any exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond anything that you can think or ask that's what's happening to you right now my love this has been another episode of the 828 podcast let me know how this resonates with you if you're listening on youtube comment below family it's free to comment it's free to like it's free to subscribe from for my for my family, for my soul tribe that really likes to link up, those are where my Patreons at. I love y'all so very much. I appreciate you spending each month with me. There's so much that I'm ex- excited to do every month just because all of you. We co-create over there. If you would like more episodes of the 828 Podcast, then you're more than welcome to join the soul family over there on patreon.com slash pretty boss TV, where you'll get all access, access to all episodes of the 828 podcast and much more. Have a very blessed day, night, evening, wherever you are. Have a great week, month. Let's get it. Peace.